All right, thanks for staying with us now. According to a well-being article by Prince Will Ene, any nation whose leaders are not accountable to its citizens will find it difficult to grow and develop. Now, accountability is one of the cornerstones of good governance in developed nations and in leaderships, uh, leadership roles. Now, it is the acknowledgement and assumption of uh, responsibility for actions, products, decisions, and policies, including the administration, governance, and implementation within the scope of the role of employment uh, position and encompassing the obligation to report, explain, and be answerable for resulting consequences. Now, the lack of accountability in Nigerian leadership is clear, and it goes without saying that this has made our nation stagnant in growth and development. Now, the question is now, uh, what role do you think citizens should play when it comes to public accountability, and how can we start to take our country back from those who are meant to be serving us but are not. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 a 3 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow, Africa 1, with the hashtag Wayshow. So I'll bring in Yemi in a minute, but I just want to hear your thoughts quickly, Jennifer and Chinelo. What do you think? Can citizens truly hold our leaders accountable? If we're ready, yes. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. If we're ready, yeah. Jennifer, how about you? I feel like a large percentage of the citizens will not be able to because they don't even hold themselves accountable most of the time because you see people acting anyhow or um, constituting nuisance and then when you call them out on it nobody wants to be accountable for their actions people start to have amnesia or start to act brand new when some things happen it's like i just literally saw you do this but you're not going to take responsibility for what you did like i mean look at the story you just took now if you actually spoke to the managers and stuff like that even the manager the other guy who the who vigilante, said, oh, yeah, the vigilante. Mm -hmm. and then you ask them questions they probably come up with oh uh, he did this that was why i did this but i mean you're supposed to take responsibility you're supposed to own up to it so yeah I, honestly i don't think so you know one thing that keeps ringing in my head is how knowledgeable are we as citizens to be able to even understand yeah. what it is that we should be asking yeah 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 <laughs> me currently serves as the executive director of enough is enough nigeria a non-partisan network of individuals and organizations committed to building a culture of good governance and public accountability in Nigeria through active citizenship. Yemi has a 23-year diverse career spanning the public and private sector in the U.S. and Nigeria. She volunteers for Kaleyewa House, an NGO founded by her late mother focused on the elderly. And in 2018, she was named as one of the most influential people of African descent, that's my part, endorsed by the United Nations in the humanitarian and religious category. And she's joined us live in studio. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for honoring our invitation. We always love it when our guests honor our invitation. Thank you so much. It's your first time here, actually. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks. All right, so, Yemi, I mean, this conversation, I think... This is coming off of the back of the elections, first of all. You know, before the elections, it was go get your PVC, go get your PVC, even though some of us were hampering and shouting that PVC is not the solution. But hey, that was all we could fight with at that point. Get your PVCs. People got their PVCs. People went to vote. And a lot of, you know, things, things happen. happened. <laughs> right? So now, we're at the point where it seems like, maybe first of all, I, I don't want to choose the word hopeless. Because I believe that as long as there's life, you know, there's hope, you know. But we are at that point where it seems like, you know, would we ever get to a Nigeria where leaders would just do what is right, you know. And it's, it's, it's a bit murky in my head because I can't see that clear picture. Because two things, I mean, I, I said something just now when Jennifer said, said it. I said, knowledge, you know, citizens don't even know enough to want to even understand how they can start to hold... Um, the uh, um, public officers accountable. We don't know enough. And secondly, right, um, even when we do, that part of, you know, like, is not affecting me directly. So let me just, you know, because Chinelo said we're not ready. And that's the truth. And when Jennifer talked about accountability, we begin to bend the rules. When it applies to me, it's no longer stealing. I just borrowed it, you know. 
but when it applies to somebody else, I call it, a, I give it a different name. Mm. So really, is it even possible for us to really um, attain that position where citizens would begin to truly take on that office of the citizens like you have on your shirt? <laughs> I mean, I think it's a combination. Again, thanks for having me. I think it's a combination of what Chinelo and Jennifer have said. Because ultimately, it's, yeah, there's a part of that understanding what it is to hold their leaders accountable. But there's also just right is right. I mean, it doesn't even have to get to, it doesn't even have to get to leaders. Just and in terms of personal responsibility, and we see it in everyday things. So I'm wondering if I can't hold Chinelo or Jennifer accountable, and they're my sisters, why would I suddenly understand or want to hold someone outside accountable? Or as we like to say, our anyhowness is okay as long as I benefit from it. Mm -hmm. I can sit in my house and get my driver's license without having to test if I can drive or go there. It's okay. But when a government official is driving down a one-way road, it'll be like, oh, those government people, they're so useless. Yeah. What's the difference? Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's literally, we need to be honest with ourselves around what we want. And because if you are clear about what, and just the same thing with life goals, if you are in a career, a job, a mother, whatever it is, if you are clear about what you want, then you plan to get it. Then you have clear goals, you have clear objectives. I want a PhD. I have to go to school. PhDs don't trump on people's laps. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing with Nigeria. If we want Nigeria to operate at a certain standard in a certain way, then we need to be clear that it's not just about those we elect. It's also about how we run our lives. And if we don't hold those same standards, it's very hard to switch them on and off in a sense. And that's what we literally do, which is why I agree with Chinelo that we're not quite ready. You know, I, I want to just take you back before I let Jennifer and Chinelo come in. Honesty. You know, we've, we, we're so used to, like you rightly said, the anyhowness. We're so used to it that it's almost like, you know, when I hear you speak now, so when I was going to go and get my international passport, mm -hmm. right? And the lady I was talking to, she was the head of um, customs then in the Festag branch, head of immigration, mm -hmm. rather, at the customs. And she told me, oh, go to the bank that just paid the fee. When you've paid the fee, we'll try to, you know, it was strange to me mm -hmm. because I paid the exact fee. I paid how much is written there for my 10-year page passport and all of that. And it was, there was no exchange of anything. But I felt very strange. Because, yeah, you were because expecting I was, yeah, something else to happen. I was expecting something else to happen. So I, I needed to, you know, at some point I was like, maybe I should get her a perfume or something. <laughs> because I could not for the life of me understand why nobody is asking me for paying extra and all of that. Because I know how these things work. Right? We are so used to doing things wrong that it is difficult when we see that things are trying to be done right. For us, even us, to even I think with Chinelo or Jennifer that say, yes. when you're even trying to correct someone, yeah. they'll be like, what's your own? Mm. What is it? And so you are looking, you are now the bad person for wanting to do the right thing. So I don't even know. So I, why I'm even <laughs> asking that is that how do we even begin to, because now we are so used to that dishonesty that mm. honesty becomes like very strange, strange to us. Yeah. You know, is it? Well, I, honestly, I believe that, interesting, honestly, honestly, they believe there's still enough of us that know what is wrong or right. So you felt strange, but you didn't, like, you didn't, if you wanted to get her a gift, it would be because you wanted to. She didn't make the demand. And you yourself, you are clear about that, that she didn't make any demands on you. You just felt that, wow, she actually, you're actually thanking her for not asking. It's yes. basically what you did. But it's okay. And that's what the whole conversation is around. Are you gifting or is it a bribe? When is a bribe a gift? Blah, de, blah, blah. You didn't bribe her because she didn't ask you anything before, nor after. But if you of your own goodwill thought she provided good customer service, if we want to call it that, and you decide you want to gift her something, yeah, why not? But I think there's still enough of us that have sense, that know what is right, mm -hmm. and that as hard as it might be, we just need to continue to demand it in the spaces that we control. Mm -hmm. And so that when people come in, and we all have influence over people, people that work with us, people that work for us, family members, they will know that Antiwa is a certain way, Auntie Chinelo is a certain way. They might be like, mm, kind of attitude, but it sinks in because regardless of when you go in other places or you have the opportunity to go other places, the things that you've experienced, they're there in your subconscious. They never go away. So I think that's the responsibility we owe ourselves to decide that we will do what we know to be right. And the rest of society will catch up. 
But the flip side of it, though, is that it makes it's very difficult doing the right thing and almost being penalized for doing the right thing. So you happen to have a nice experience. You paid. It was fine. But some other people will go there. My experience when I went to get my password was slightly different. I'd done everything paid online. You should have seen the guy that I met. Anger. Like, how dare you be online? Like, he literally told me, so what do you want me to do now? Mm -hmm. Do your job, perhaps. Mm -hmm. he, was, no, he was that upset. Because obviously, because I've paid online and done the proper way, there was no opportunity for him to ask me to pay more. I've already paid. So he now tried to make the process a bit difficult. But he didn't know that madman meets madwoman. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, it's not that deep. Eh, I, should have, I should have come with that pay next time. I will do that. Mm. Can we now keep this thing moving? But it was interesting that he was very angry, angry mm. that I did the right thing. Now, for a lot of us, I mean, again, look at the sacrifice of time, part of how we justify it. Mm. And it's understandable in a sense, to be fair. Process that should take me an hour takes me two whole days. Mm. Now, the cost benefit of my time is not enough for two whole days. So, but the fortunate part is that if you had asked, <clears throat> if you asked me to pay 100% premium for Express, I would gladly pay it. But let the money go into the Straight into the coffers of, of the, the government. government. True. But even the government themselves, because they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just leave it there. Let's just, let's just pack it like there. You know, you know. Let's just pack it there. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, I, I think as human beings, or let me use Nigeria as a whole, as a people, we are deeply rooted in corruption, and um, we've been so inbred, and we have this mediocre side of us as a nation where anything goes. And that's because a lot of us were born into mediocrity. We've seen the government, we've seen everything that is happening, and this is what you're used to. We've adapted to it. So now anything that looks out of place, which is supposed to be the norm, mm. looks wrong. And that was why you felt wrong. Mm. Like, oh, why is this woman <laughs> doing this? Because you're very surprised that someone could be so honest to actually want to do their job. We are used to people who aren't being responsible for what they are being paid to do. To do. Mm. So even the government, I mean, it, it was this election time that a lot of us saw, at least we had a glimpse of hope. Until now, a lot of people's hope have haven't died. died. Some have died, some haven't. Mm. I know people that I talk to and they tell you they've not given up hope. And there's a reason. There are people that I've spoken to just two days ago. A friend of mine said, he's not leaving this country, you that is here, he stays, he will stay here, this country is going to get better. And it, it, it was amazing to see, it was amazing to see because he feels like things will get better, something would happen, mm -hmm. there will be a change along the line. But then if you look at the trend so far, especially from the presidential election to the gubernatorial election, you realize that a lot of people started to hold the government accountable. Mm. Do you agree with that? Yes. What do you mean by that? So people were coming out to say, enough is enough. Mm. We don't want this anymore. You want to come into power. Let's see your manifesto. Let's see what you can do. People you want to kick out, who wanted to be re-elected, we started to ask questions. I mean, look at Lagos, for example. People asked. Now, we said, oh, there was so much competition. That's why the, the governor who wanted to be re-elected had to come out to list out everything well, that he had Russia, done. Do you understand? Cream. Exactly. I mean, before then, when the debate, the exactly, mm -hmm. when the debate was going on, we didn't see any didn't of that. Up, he didn't yeah. show up. But he saw that people started asking questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but, but I'm not sure about that. But, so I was going to yeah. say that. Is yeah. that enough? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure that it was that people were asking questions. Lagos was beaten in the presidential elections. Mm -hmm. So that was a very clear message mm -hmm. that APC was not loved as they thought in Lagos. So if I want to win my election, I need to be here. And he'd been busy following his principle around. So it wasn't really here campaigning. But why was APC beating in the election in Lagos? I, I mean, I could give a bunch of reasons. For some people, it was NSAS. For some people, it was because they um, impounded their cars mm -hmm. and then sold it off. Some people, it was because they felt they weren't not working. For some people, it was because of security. I mean, Lagos has gotten significantly more unsafe under um, 
disgusting. Governor so doesn't that translate to the fact that people were now holding the government accountable? It's like, yeah, we've been suffering for I mean, my point time. is that like, you were saying asking anymore. questions. So the mm. point is that when they weren't engaging some way. They weren't trying to say, what will you do or asking him. He was the one now offering mm. to say that and obviously using whatever he could. I have experience. I've done this for a while. Let's continue the great work, yada, yada, yada. But I think part of the other side of really what you're saying is that also the environments we have doesn't penalize bad behavior. Mm. True. So parents talk about it with their children all the time. Your child wants to do something bad. They'll be eyeing you. Like, move this thing. Did she do anything? Did she do anything? Did she do anything? And if you don't you do test. anything, they'll keep testing. testing. And they'll keep pushing. And literally, that's, if we look at it, that's what we've done with, with the government. I'm just general bad behavior in society. Mm. At a point in our time, if a mother saw another child doing something wrong, you would correct. Mm. Or you, you would call out people if you saw them doing something wrong. People that, that I was looking for a word. We had shame. Mm. People would actually be a bit like, mm, like, I don't want to do that so I don't look bad. Yeah. Mm. But now, any harness... If they're not no shame, they shame the shame. Shame. Yeah, shame. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Let me take oh. a break. You know, I want to say that you cannot shame the shame. I'm shameless. So leave me. <laughs> I, you cannot shame me. But let's take a break, right? When we come back from here, I think Chinelo is itching to ask a question. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing the citizens' role in public accountability with Yemi Adamoleko. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. You can also tweet at us at Weisho after one with hashtag Weisho. Chinelo. Okay, so, I mean, you see this talk of citizens' role and all of that, right? Like, you, when you asked me, I said, if we're ready, because the truth is that we're not ready yet. You know, I always say this thing. These good governance that we're all clamoring for, we're, we're, we're not ready for good governance. Because good, good, good governance will mean you eating mm. biscuits in your car and not tossing the wrapper on the street. Because if you do that, the, I remember we used to have Kai, what they call those people. Mm. They used to arrest people for things like that, right? So are we ready for those kind of things? Now, okay, that's even on one side. We also know that when we talk about public accountability, that's supposed to be like the hallmark for democracy right yeah. and right now democracy in nigeria is just a paper procedure because we're not holding anybody responsible for their omissions their acts we're not for the, their adequacies and inadequacies we're not saying anything about all of that but now let's even keep all of that aside let's assume now right we're about to start we're entering a new on the 29th of may new era we're entering a new era we're starting off with a new <laughs> president in lagos states where we live um our governor has been re-elected and you know now, how do we move forward? How do we now start to hold these people accountable and say, look, Governor Sonwolu, when you were coming back, you promised the Red Rail was going to be completed June 2024. How's that going to work? How do we start to ask these questions? How do we engage start to them. engage them? Start by knowing them, number one. Mm. So we spend a lot of energy on president and governor. And it's understandable because for the president, it doesn't matter if you're in Enugu or Taraba. We're talking about the same person. Mm. So it's easier in terms of noise and amplification. You, everybody's on Buhari's matter because he's our shared president. At a state level, it's also important because everybody's talking some will do, some will do, some will do. So it's also amplified. But for a lot of things, it's your local government chairman really that's responsible for it. And it's not as sexy a role. Uh, if you see the numbers, I mean, we talk about presidential numbers, then dropping percentage-wise at state level. By the time you're doing local government chairman elections, it's horrible. Oh, the number, maybe like 500 people came out to, <laughs> to vote. vote. It's terrible. But in a lot of ways, your local government chairman is actually responsible for things closest to you, from your markets to your street signs to the gutter in front of your house to some roads mm. to primary school education to primary health care. That's all their, their, their bit. So I think the number one point is actually start by knowing who represents you. Number two, recognize that you have more impact in numbers. So if Uwa is a local government chairwoman, mm. and I go and see Uwa and I talk to her, I say, oh, no problem, thank you very much, I'll look into it, <laughs> and I go. But if 30 people from a part of her constituency come and see her, and she looks at them well, I'd be like, wow, okay. It's a bit harder for her to ignore. And so understanding that there's power in numbers, and not only the numbers of going to visit, but also the fact that one visit to Uwa is not enough. So therefore, if there are 30, 40 of us, 
let's say five of us decide that okay on Monday we'll go. And I have a, actually interesting ex experience of that from Ikorodu. We used to have a radio show, or we still do actually, called Noah Hala Monday. And the format of it is people call in with a problem. And our job is to help you solve the problem yourself. So it's not allowing you to invent. So you call and say something happening in your local government. This was in Ikorodu. At the time, Abike Dabiri was in House of Reps. And I was very excited because I knew she actually picks up her phone or she engages. So mm -hmm. send her a text or call her. She might not pick up your phone, but she'll return it. So when the guy said it was from Ikorodu, I was very excited. So I said, OK, Abike Dabiri is your House of Rep member. This is her number. Call her. His first response was, really? Mm. I can call her. I was like, yeah, she works for you. Mm. Again, to your point about knowledge, we don't understand that there's nobody, both elected and appointed, all of them are employees. Because if not, the fact that we elected them into office, they wouldn't have jobs. Mm. So it was very surprised that really I said, yes, call her. And I was very excited because I knew she would answer. Not everybody does. <laughs> but, and she did. She didn't pick up the phone, but he sent a text and she replied. So when he called, I think a week or two later, he was super excited that she had responded. And she told him what to do. I think it was about a road. Call this person, go and see this person, go and see. And what they then did as a community was they created a schedule. So the three of you will go on Monday. The four of you will go on Tuesday. Mm. <laughs> Five. And they kept on it. And I think after a few months, that part of the road got fixed. Mm. So I say that to say that it's difficult work. But it starts with showing up and letting them know that you represent me and you owe me to speak to me. Mm. And your point about also teaching, we need to do a lot more about teaching people who is responsible for, for what. what. So your gutter is not Buhari's problem. Mm. Neither is primary school Buhari's problem. And so understanding who is responsible for what, holding and engaging. And I mean, we say elections, and that's part of the thing about elections, that it's a real threat to people in office, because mm. that's your, your time to say that you haven't done well. We are going to vote you out. That narrative also has a shortcoming when there are no good options. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you have other people in the race who are then a bit more um, engaging and say, I will do this, I will do this, it makes the choice a bit uh, easier. But that's when people also vote by performance. And we're not voting because your hair is straight yeah. <laughs> and your hair is curled. Or you are yellow and you happen to be black. So yeah. So those are the things that are real. And we mm -hmm. can't run away from it. So and go this goes back to your point. So if we're serious about good governance and people want to deliver, then I don't really care if you're yellow or black. Mm -hmm. I just need you to get the work done. Yeah. But if I don't really care, and I know that you are going to give me rice and something, and you are going to whatever, then those types of things, or you and I will meet in church, and you and I will meet in the mosque, if those things are still part of why, so not everybody, some of us vote. Those of us that uh, the cost of our votes are a bit higher, need to be a bit more engaged, and also, Educate, like our spheres of influence. How are we engaging the people who are in our spheres of influence to understand how their votes affect their lives? Yeah. So I, I, I like that part because you kept on saying education, education. Part of one of your mandates with um, Enough is Enough is to educate, you know, and ensure voter participation. There was a lot of energy this year. I mean, the energy that happened with the elections this year, I don't think I've seen it any in the history of my voting, right? There was a lot of energy. And, I, and like you rightly said, a lot of factors played out. The answers, a lot of things. So the youth were really, really, really engaged. So but how do we maintain this momentum, yeah. right? Because it's one thing for us to be upset now as Nigerians, yeah. and we quickly just die, the energy. The energy just goes quiet. It's just like Jimmy Agbaje coming every four years, you know? <laughs> <laughs> she can't even put Jimmy on too. I can never put Jimmy on. You know why it, it now made it more obvious <laughs> when Jeremy was running for the race? for governorship. That's what it now made so obvious. Because I've been saying it, that that man is not serious about governorship. But everybody comes out saying, no, no, no. I say he's not serious. Because now, when Somolu saw real competition, he, he, he was selling ice cream. He was doing different things. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, so there is the energy, the momentum that has been, you know, I, I, there's an awakening that happened, right? Yeah. How do we maintain that tempo, right? I get you, because there's a part of the education, knowing who is supposed to do what. We don't know that one. We are very, very... Uh, illiterate. We, we, are, we, are, illiterate yes, yeah. we are we are very illiterate when it comes to political issues, right? Mm -hmm. That's why that politeracy that uh, Kuli Lawa is teaching us, we are learning. Yeah. But we, we, we don't know anything about governance. But I want us to also maintain that tempo because that, that energy that we have as young people now being really involved in what is happening, right? So they talked about voters' participation 
and we, we, we came out, we participated. So how do we now participate in governance, right? Ensuring that everybody that have been elected or selected, you know, those people, you know, we are on their toes. We are making sure that they, we keep them on their toes. I think we need to think of ways to build community around mm -hmm. accountability issues. Yes. So, and probably the more local, the better, so you can see results. Because if all of us are facing the president, then it's a bit harder to hold, to hold him, if I want to use that word. But your local government chairman, office, and we can find his house. Your house of rep. I mean, at a point in time, I remember a conversation I had with, should I say his name? I won't. A house of rep member in Lagos. And he was teasing and said, you people, you will come to the National Assembly and be protesting. We'll be looking at you from the window. And when you're tired, you'll go home. I said, eh. I said, don't worry. The time will come when we won't come to the National Assembly. It's your house. It's your house. Mm -hmm. You should have seen his face. Literally, he started shaking. I'm my sister now, but why? Why? And <laughs> then, come to Abuja. No, no, Abuja is very good. You know, all of us are in Abuja. You can see all of us at once. Mm -hmm. I said, no. You are my rep in Lagos. So let me just come to your house. Mm -hmm. Because literally, if you think about it, for a protest in Abuja to have impact, you need numbers. Yes, for people yes. to really feel that things are happening. But in front of your housing, where you are, there's uh -huh. just a hundred people. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need to shout. We just go just there. Come just sit down. Ah, yeah, get you carry calm gas. That's it. Begin the cook rice. Yeah. It's your wife that will tell you. <laughs> I want to go out. Can you <laughs> deal with this? Yeah. So that when when in small because it's smaller small to manage yeah. and just begin to say that okay, you my house of rep member, you my senator, you my local government chairman, you are a uh, project. Mm. So what are the things that we want? Specific things. It doesn't have to be long. We want you to do four things. Okay. So this is the plan that we're going to have. And it's just organizing. So it's organizing at a more macro level, number one. Organizing without cameras. Because I think part of the things mm -hmm. that ends us, maybe a side effect of it, is that people got used to the buzz. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're on social media, we're on TV today, TV tomorrow. By the time you start organizing in local communities, how many times are you going to be on news? So also getting used to that level of grunt work. That you don't that have to put, bring the camera. Yeah. It's not everything that is for the gram. Yeah. Yeah. There's really no need. Because mm -hmm. actually, first of all, you'll be tired. Mm -hmm. Because uh, gram, there's no gram-worthy moment today. You come back tomorrow, there's no moment again. Oh, we need something for the gram. Mm -hmm. So if the gram is driving you, you'll be frustrated. Mm -hmm. So that as well. And then layered, obviously, on that is the point you made about education. Because it's in understanding whose role is what, that you then know what to demand. And one of the things as an organization we're committed to doing this year is do a bit more storytelling around success stories. Because we also realize that for when people hear mm. that citizens engaged their duty bearers and got results, it's like, oh, OK. It changes them exactly. So we want to say, tell a bit, because they are those stories. They might not make 10 o'clock news or yeah. whatever it is, but the stories do exist. So if we want citizens to do more, then let's show them examples of citizens who have. Who have. And who have been successful, mm. actually. Yeah. Awesome. So how do we go about this education? Are we going to um, empower the media houses or individuals, companies, organizations? And then several, several platforms. So media houses, for example, also need to decide that this democracy is important enough to them that they're willing to give some of their airtime hmm. for education. We, at a point in time, EIA had radio programs in 33 states. Wow. And in building those, those programs, in talking to radio station owners and managers, I kept saying, you cannot charge me the same thing you charge a bank or a telco. Mm. I don't make money. Mm. I'm not a profit-making organization, so I'm not declaring, if you look at their own records, they're declaring billions as profit. Yeah. I run a non-profit. I rely on the goodwill of others to fund the work that I do. Mm. So you can't give a telco a bill of X and give me that one. It won't work. Mm. And for me, it was a bit frustrating to have to fight that fight. I'm not, what am I selling? I'm selling citizens' rights. I'm selling know your rights so you don't go to jail. Mm. So why it's the same person who is selling something for them to make money, you want to charge me the same thing? So I think media platforms have a huge responsibility to work with non-profit organizations in creating, it doesn't have to be a lot. It can be 30 minutes a week or 30 minutes a day, give something that allows citizens to be educated. That's one. Another, uh, me another channel is religious organizations. Mm. I tell people, Christians or, or Muslims, you will hear your pastor or your imam At more times. twice a, a week. <laughs> and that is more times in a year 
mm. than you heard Buhari in eight years. Mm. Sure. Even, Very true. Even plus, plus Buhari plus Songo for those of us in Lagos, plus your government. Mm. So if you have a captive audience like that, how are we using that? Again, you go to uh, church or the mosque to be edified and fellowship and all of that, but five minutes of civic education, will that kill anybody? Mm. And then our school curriculum. We need to change our school curriculum, so it's part of... We are now talking about civic education and all of that, but I, I mean, the last time I looked at the curriculum, I was like, mm, yeah. So working with our curriculum to improve it. And I think the people who actually have the best opportunity to do that are private school owners. Because yeah. not only do you teach the regular curriculum, you also have the, the, the prerogative to add, to add to it. And then a lot of organizations that do extracurricular activities, working with children, and maybe land on, let me land on that. Maybe we also start a bit earlier. So rather than focusing maybe necessarily on adults, yeah. you start, start with 16, five, 17. Five, yeah. Even, even five-year-olds, yes. Just create the curriculum, curriculum to, to fit to, there. For them to yes. be able to absorb it exactly. as, as basic exactly. as that. Exactly. And as you grow older, you need you, curriculum yeah. that, that um, empowers your, your stage, so to speak. Yeah. That's very fantastic. Storytelling, and li I love that idea of storytelling because I think, again, um, you know, if people see that it's possible, yes. you know, oh, this person actually went, mm -hmm. like you rightly said, the guy said, oh, I called and she picked. And if people see that it's possible, and uh, somebody tried it, we said, well, let's go to our own local government. Because I just believe that, you know, we've been fighting, the, we've been fighting wrongly. Mm -hmm. You know, they say insanity is definition of okay. doing the things, the same thing, and expecting a different result. That's what we've been doing. So why don't we, you know what, whoever you want to select or elect is not our headache. Shall walk. Shall walk. That's the thing, like, let us just, no worry, you've selected yourself, no problem. We will make you do the job. You know, I, and I think, you know, with what you've said now, it just makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, um, as little as, okay, for instance, maybe on this uh, VI road now, legally, who is in charge? Mm. If there's anything, who is supposed to be declaring the gutters? Why do we have flooding and all of that? Yeah. When you gather that information, three, four, five people go and knock on their door. Come, let's go and okay. let's go and pay him a visit. You know, it's very likely that you get more yeah. results well, than true. yes. Because they don't use. I remember the first time I called my senator. <laughs> right. Hello. Are you a member of APC? No. Are you a journalist? No. Okay. I, will, I don't think he has. I will, I'm sure he was thinking I will relate it, but he didn't, ask that. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't ask that one. So what do you want? I was like, oh, um, I'm Minikeja, you represent me, and I just wanted to know how you voted on this particular bill. See, shouting. <laughs> how dare you? Who are you? How? I said, oh, God, it's not that deep. Calm down. <laughs> now, what was interesting then was that it was obvious that nobody had ever asked him. Hmm. So he wasn't used to being asked, asked what did you do? I was like, sir, I'm just trying to understand because you are there voting on my behalf. Mm. So I just wanted to know how you voted and can you call. So we went back and forth a bit until I think we now came to a happy medium. And I think a few times after that, that I called, hello, my sister, how are you? It's how we <laughs> ended the matter. But the first call was very instructive because I was asking. He had never been asked and wasn't, wasn't trained, mm. if we use that, on how to respond. But, I mean, this is probably like eight years ago or so. So things have improved significantly also because there's more awareness. Yeah. Or social media in 2011, when after Jonathan's elections and a lot of uh, government officials came on social media, as they came, they ran. <laughs> Why? Because they're used to TV or radio that's unidirectional. Mm -hmm. But on social media, as Twitter especially, as you are talking, they're answering you. <laughs> and, Twitter, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> thank you. and Twitter at that time, I don't even know how many characters, fewer characters. So there's no time for your excellence. You can't even explain. You just, that. You, just 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 it. Uh, you lied. That's not true. So <laughs> as in, and then so that shock of. But then look, fast forward 12 years. You now have young people who have jobs hmm. managing those accounts. So we have made significant progress. But I think that level of engagement needs to become more than just social media. Hmm. It needs to be real life. Um, Absolutely. Let's, let's talk about and I think finally for us on ways, how do we start to, because I like this idea you talked about storytelling and, you know, um, educating five minutes education and all of that. Because again, we are here live Monday to Friday. Give us imagine, five yes, imagine if we're able to know. And honestly speaking, it's something that I am, I, and again, for us on the show, it's not just because we want to be on TV. Let's really hit the, the issues where it matters, right? So how do we even engage and partner with you? Because I love this office of the citizen. 
You understand? Even though some people have argued that do, uh, we are not citizens, we are just existing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are not qualified to be called citizens. But how do we, we partner? We are aspiring to. Yes. <laughs> oh, we're happy to. Happy to provide you content. Okay. Um, for yeah, five days a week. Let us yes. know. We'll give you content. Because we days. really want to engage. We want to engage. You know, the citizens. We want to engage people. Yeah. Let's begin to. Because all this fight back and forth. Me, I've moved on. Yeah. I don't cry, my eyes don't swell up. I have told myself I'm never going to vote again. <laughs> you know, but it's I mean it's very it's, and thank you very much, and we're very happy to do that. So Lagos, for example, has 20 local governments. So for example, you can take a local government per day, mm -hmm. highlight it. Who's the chairman? Where's the chairman's office? What's the role of the local government chairman? What are the highlights in your community? So even if that every day that you tune in, you learn something about yeah. governance. Thank you. I'm happy to provide content for that. Awesome. Yeah. So we are going to be giving you content bars. Whether you like it or not, you must learn. Yeah. <laughs> so at the end of it, also, mm -hmm. you cannot say you were not told. Yes. Yes. So you have the information. The fact, as you rightly said, you might choose not to use it. Mm -hmm. But you can't say you, you didn't. I mean, for, especially for those who watch ways regularly. Mm. You can't say, eh, ah, okay, I didn't know. No. Every day, we're telling you that this is what you can do and this is how you have power. Then if you even have your chairman somewhere, maybe we are not there, maybe in Enugu or somewhere, because we have a lot of callers from different parts of yep. Nigeria. You can send us the street name. We'll go and help you look for your chairman. Yeah. <laughs> because that's the whole and idea. We actually have, and I, I mean, I, I wasn't prepared to, I didn't prepare to talk about it. We actually have a WhatsApp bot. Awesome. That with your vote, your polling unit information, it will tell you everybody that represents you. Mm -hmm. So by the by next year, I'll share with you, and you can kind of put the graphic up. Please, so it will we tell will. you who your governor is, who your senator is, who mm -hmm. your house of rep member is, who your local government chairman is, and for all of them that we have their phone numbers, it will be there. Mm -hmm. For if you have your email address, we'll give it. If you have your constituency office, you'll get it, and all of it comes as a WhatsApp message. All right, <laughs> whether you like it or not, <laughs> we got you will work. <laughs> and the beauty of it is that yes. because it comes as a WhatsApp message, it's on your phone. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, so you are not having to look yeah. anywhere. Don't look too much, and yeah. you cannot share it with all the people in your yeah. area. Yeah. Oh God, we, we are <laughs> we are, here for, we are there for them. Let's take <laughs> comments quickly. By the time the message gets to your phone, you see forwarded one hundred times. <laughs> This is Austin from Delta. For me, we need to hold our leaders accountable. But first of all, be a good citizen by holding yeah. yourself accountable too in that your little space. The social media platforms are veritable tools to use. If the road leading to your street is washing away shortly after commissioning, take a picture and post it. <laughs> Calling out those in charge, both the government officials that awarded the contract and even the contractor who is a political big wig living in that community. Was it not true the social media that some Erring police officers have been fished out and punished. Mm -hmm. As we have situation room for elections, let us create a situation room for good governors. Absolutely. We shouldn't lose hope, please. I salute your guest today. I have watched her regularly in another TV station. She's highly cerebral in her thoughts. My greetings to get my greetings to her, please. Thank you. Quickly. Thank you, Austin. <laughs> good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. I want to believe that citizens have the right to the government that they want. That is why we have the word <laughs> democracy, and that is why we have elections. If the citizens don't have the true governance that they clamored for, then they should be held accountable. And that thing is that we need to have a thorough check of the manifest of the person we are voting for and choosing. My dear beautiful Stachini asked the question. She said, are we ready for good governance? That question is very key. So good to have Yemi in the studio today. It's been a while. My name is Daniel Ilo. Thank you, Daniel. Citizens' role in public accountability begins from our homes, families, and where the lessons of account uh, accountabilities are taught. But, to, uh, but today, we can see lack of accountability in public spaces because of failures in our family systems and mm, homes. Yeah. Parents and guardians do not take care, um, do not take care of how their children and words behave because they seem to close their eyes in their actions. They do not care about money, uh, crazies, blah, blah, blah. Who cares how you become rich? Accountability must be demanded in our homes and from those we serve in public spaces. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Amy Ademoleko. We My had pleasure. a fantastic... And thank we're going to be doing citizens' oh, engagement. Yes. There I'm, we work. Really now, before we go, thank you, ladies. Follow us across all our social media handles. Like, share, invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Um, it is not only what we do, but also what we do not do for which we are accountable. So, everything. See you tomorrow at 8 p.m. <laughs> Bye.